the job that teaches you valuable lessons that you take with you to every other job. First lesson, the first lesson you learn at any job is the most important lesson, is how to call in sick effectively, okay? Because there's an art form, and you need to learn it early, otherwise you're messed up for the rest of your life, all right? You can't, you gotta call them up and you just gotta go, oh, I can't make it, uh, I got some sort of bug, and then you hang up, okay? That's all you do, you keep it vague, let them connect dots that aren't there, right? You don't want to get too specific, because then it obviously sounds like you're making it up, right? Like you can't call it and just be like, oh, I, I can't make it into work today because I cut my arm off and it's bleeding diarrhea. I'm sorry, I'll be in the I'm sure. Should have posted this one. Yeah. Uh, first job, first job supply. I feel like most people, they, they work one of two jobs for their first jobs. They either work in retail or they're a waiter or waitress at a restaurant. Okay? And I, I never got a waiter. I've never done that. I always went to retail when I was younger. And I feel like being a waiter as your first job is the hardest job you can ever do. Because if you're a 16 year old waiter, that is all the information people need to hate you. Just immediately. That's all they need to know. I was at a restaurant and I saw a woman screaming at some poor 16-year-old kid, clearly a first job, screaming at him because she, he brought her a salad with walnuts on it. And she was allergic to walnuts and she was all upset about it. And I understand her point of view. You know, of course, if you have another allergy, be concerned. But don't be mean. Especially if you're that easy to kill. You know? Uh, I got uh, my first job was uh, I worked at the Brooks Pharmacy in Fort Ed Plaza, which is now right in, I think. I like to use local references about my life when I come here. I worked at that Brooks Pharmacy. That was my first job. And uh, I remember I worked with this guy, uh, Brandon, who was like, he was 30 when I was 16. And me and Brandon really had nothing in common except for the fact that we both worked at the store and we both really loved horror movies. And that was it. By the way, if you want to know what Brandon looked like, imagine a 30 year old who knows way too much about horror movies, and you're probably in the ballpark. Okay? Brandon looked like the kind of guy who would take notes during the horror movies, just like, yeah, that'll show up. You know, like one of those guys. Like, Here's how creepy Brandon was as a guy. His real name is Brian. I'm too scared to use his real name in the joke. Okay? It's absolutely true. Uh, so one Halloween, I'm working with Brandon, and uh, Brandon's telling me all about his Halloween costume. He's all excited. He was going to be his favorite. Jason Voorhees from the Friday the 13th movies. And he was all excited. He had, he had a mask, he had, he had a hockey mask, and he had the clothes from the movies. And uh, to top off his costume, he had a real machete. Uh, I live in New York now, and when I tell people this, they always ask me, like, what's going on? Where, 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 where did you find a real machete? And I have to enlighten them to what's going on in the rest of the country. Uh, Walmart. They just sell. That's what happens here. You can just go and buy Machete. And these are, you don't need a prescription or nothing. These are just over the counter machetes that you can pick up. Uh, I, I think the Walmart sells machetes just so that you forget that they also sell guns next to the toys. I think it's just a brilliant political move that they have. Uh, so Brandon's telling me, uh, yeah, I got this new, I got this new thing. I got a machete. I asked him how much was the machete, and he said twenty dollars. Not enough. Not enough for a weapon like that. Shit. 
Seven great 